Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of On the Workbench. This is episode 23 and well, I think we got something unique for you here. I've never done the chibis before, certainly never in a tutorial video or anything like that. Let's start that now. What the heck, why not? And we've got a couple of them here, Let's see, well four actually. This is one. Oh, we got a couple other little guys over here. These are actually from the My Little Scythe board game. It's essentially the Scythe board game, but for kids. And you've got, I think there's seven of these. There's two of each. Now over here, I think I'll probably get rid of this one. Well, maybe I'll keep it around. But here, we've got this little picture right here. Come on. That's better. This one to make you move in the wrong one. You can see there's a couple of each here. Two of the water buffaloes. I know you can't see my cursor. And we've got the two of the sort of ninja monkey dudes, whatever those are. And what we're doing is the double. Oh, we got the warthog or boar or whatever he is. There's a couple of those. So we are going to do just a. Here, let's just make this real, real, real small in the corner over there. There we go. What else do we got? Are we showing every Yeah, I think we showed them all. Here's what they look like with just the basic primer on there. Again, that's the usual Badger Steinal Res. I, it's, I didn't have to try and do that. I could have just gone with just a straight up old brush on primer. Actually, I did that for a couple where I just I had forgotten to prime them and I just brushed down the primer. It was all the same color. You know, there was no none of the Zenithal highlighting or anything like that. It's different painting these chibi guys, that's for sure, because, well, you got these huge, wide-open areas like this. And because it was obviously sculpted digitally, you have some of the unusual folds, some of the not-quite-natural folds going on. you got the big eyes, all kinds of interesting stuff. It's a little bit of... Some of it you're trying to get almost a bit of realism in there, and other parts of it, well, a little less realistic. Now, we'll be using a couple of things, a few of the contrast paints here. We'll use the Wildwood for some obvious reasons, but I thought we'd go back to playing around with some of the transparents from Pro Acryl here. So the purple, the brown, oh, we've got the, the black here, and then some of the standard Monument Pro Acryl paints. Because remember, we really have an opposite here. Let's just take these two. One on the left is going to be really opaque. It's going to cover a lot. This one, well, as the name would suggest, transparent, not opaque. We've got some of the usual Reaper paints out here. We'll have some of the liners out, the mint green here. Just Again, some of the colors you've seen me use time and again. Even actually have some of the contrast medium sitting over here in this one. And, of course, usual with the brushes the number eight round craft brushes what we'll do is we'll throw some paint out here on our palette we'll get this going it's it the title says obviously initial glazes and shaded base coat but this is a little it's a little different here so the approach has to be slightly different not com not just entirely different but I mean, obviously we're this is Really, you don't have those fine details. I mean, let's grab something that we were just working on. You know, something like this where you have all these tiny little areas. Very different than working on something like this. So we're going to give it a try next. We're just going to charge right into this. We got some colors on the palette. Some of these are the transparent. So that's the brown. That's the black. That's the purple over there. We've got a couple of the regular monument paints here. The purple, yellow, it's kind of a dark gray. We have a sepia liner over here. We have a maiden flesh over here, mint green over here. And then we've got some of our, oh, we got Leviathan blue up here, wildwood here. Let's see if our, ah, okay, flesh tear is red, is still usable. That's what I like about these little, basically these little watercolor pots. Keep the stuff alive. 
fairly well. Now let's play around with our eagle over here, shall we? Let's grab, we got sepia liner. I, I could use brown liner too. I'm going to take a little touch of that transparent black. And what that does is it gives it a little hint-ish of greenish. Now let's do a little more. A little more of that. Darkens it down. And this should be somewhat transparent here. Not completely, but let's get in to the bird here, which may or may not be a golden eagle. Oh, what the heck? I'm just going to go right into the beak here. That's a slightly different color, but we will do that. We'll hit that later. Now, in, in the latter stages, for the most part, I did them two by two. Here, these are mostly the original ones that I did. God, I had never really done these before, so I didn't really know what to expect. So here I'm actually grabbing a little bit of that dark gray, because that's going to give me maybe a little more opacity there. Let's get Let's get his arms or his wings, whichever they are. So whenever I need some opacity, I can always dive into dive into that gray. But we do want some variety, so I just went back into the transparent brown. It's got a little bit of reddishness to it. So we've kind of got a triple play of opacity here. You've got some of the sepia liner, not super opaque. We've got the, well, the transparent black, the transparent brown. We know what those are. And that little, little touch of gray, a little bit of touch of gray to increase some opacity there. And then it does the same thing. It deadens the color a little bit. Now the bases, yeah, as you, I think you saw, they just get a color on them. That is it, because they, well, after all, it is a kid's game. It's meant to be played by the kiddies. So, you know, having a completely realistic base, eh, not the biggest priority in the universe. What was important was just a little bit of shading here, make them look somewhat Believable, lifelike, uh, whatever the heck the word is. This this is all new to me, doing the chibi stuff. So, you know how I always tell you about commission things where you never quite know what's going to roll across your table. And you just, you have to be prepared for that. Now, I actually, well, let's see. Oh, what the heck. I'm going to see if I can't mess around with a little bit of Yeah, I just wanted to fill that in there. And then the beak. I'm just going to take some of my yellows here. Sepia liner. Touch of that yellow to make sure it's got a little opacity to it. Some of the maiden flesh to create a lighter color, and let's just hit this beak straight away. And remember, this is for all intents and purposes a shaded base coat. Now, some of these may go off screen because they're just the shapes are a little bit unusual, they're just not like the standard miniatures, and I've had to. I don't know as they develop all new things. It was sort of like perpetually painting cloaks. Uh, I guess if I had to come up with something to... that That's what it was like. I felt like I was just constantly painting cloaks. Those wide open surfaces, I think you know what I mean there. Okay, now we're going to go after our... Couldn't quite tell what this was supposed to be, if he was a beaver or a raccoon. He doesn't have a tail, but I suppose he's 
French. Let's get him with some skin or fur tones, as the case may be. The eyes, I'll do next with those. Is I just sort of take some of the opaque white from the Creature Caster, Monument, Slow Fuse, whatever, paint line. Just sort of get that as light as possible because with those, the big old eyes like that, and if you want to do a little bit of some fun shading where the eye has a little bit of color, a little bit easier to do that when it starts out lighter. Now I will show you something real quick here. Just gonna get some of that in as this dries. Now this is essentially the references that I had to work from. So not every, I didn't have all the information needless to say on especially things like on their feet and everything. Sometimes I just had to, had to guess for lack of a better term. Now I'm gonna take some of that red. Don't necessarily want it to be pink. You can see I haven't washed the brush at all. I'm sort of using whatever sludge is in there. Ah, it's already, it's already time for palette sludge. Heavens to Murgatroy. And we'll just go with a little bit of strap right there. And it seems, you know, what we would probably do is reach for some kind of usual leather color, normal leather color, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going by the references that I see. That's that's another one of those things you just have to get used to where you're working to some sort of concept art or you know another figure that somebody else they saw somebody else do and they say well can you do this can you do that now those other things can lead to a some potentially sticky situation where they show you somebody else's artwork or whatever is another miniature painter. They say, well, I want it to look like this. Can you match this? And you say, oh, yeah, I can do that. And then you realize, well, all right. So if I show this stuff around, well, now I've kind of copied somebody. And the I guess the better known they are for, if you want to use that expression, people may say, wow, look at this. You're just copying so-and-so. I bring this up. And just kind of doing some basic things here. You can see we're just taking the transparent black, throwing it over this. Because in those early days, I was asked, okay, look, we, you, we need you to match the style. And I mean exactly the style of this painter because they're not doing stuff with us anymore. And we have to have these match. They, they must match. We can't look like we have 20 different painters doing this, which is kind of the opposite of Reaper, <laughs> especially well, with their sculptors too, but they wanted this uniformity. So I, they even sent me some of those miniatures. I had to study those suckers and I had to basically analyze how they were done and then try and replicate them. And it must've worked because even to this day, there are still people that believe they were painted by the other person, even though the vast majority were painted by me. So there's there's a few things to take out of that is, okay, you'll be asked sometime, well, and when you are asked and people say, we will give you that stuff that helps pay your mortgage in exchange for doing this, you say, well, okay I will match this stuff that you want me to match that's just the way it is and then realize that you won't that people will not acknowledge it perhaps is your work which is it can be a little it can stress you out a little bit or whatever the case may be but it sort of goes along with with the game. I mean, that's that's the game you play. 
So I don't mean to dive so much into kind of hardcore commission discussions here, but that is one of the purposes of these workbench sessions is to sort of pull back that curtain a little bit and show you, well, whatever the latest wild thing is that comes across the painting table here. And then it's, yeah, I can present the information to you and you process it, it as you please. I was also reminded of this because a few people that we know, they've, they want to do that, that plunge as a miniature painter. That's what they want to be doing, which is, that's fantastic. But right away, it's best if they, I don't want to say know all the facts, but know some of the expectations that'll maybe be placed on them that haven't been placed on them before by others, by themselves. Now with this, since this is a little bit more on the opaque side, Maybe I could even get away with a little wet blending here. Initial wet blending, we'll see. I think there was at one point a little discussion of, well, maybe we don't do these exactly the same color. But then it just, it made sense. If this was, I guess, a little more of a grown-up version of, of a game, well, there... You do a little more stuff on the bases or some other thing to be a little less cartoony. Now, boots, well, it looks like, yeah, I think the boots were sort of a dark gray there. And we'll just, we'll just hit them with that. We got a tail here to do too. So that, that's why I have the, the miniatures here because as you can see, uh, didn't have room for views from all angles of these. What I want to do is, it's been a while since I painted this guy. And I want to look at, what do we do? Okay, so the tail is lighter, skin tone, blah, blah, blah. That's how that's actually going to be metal there. All right, just had a... Sort of re-familiarize myself with that. Now we are going to... I'm taking a little bit of that mint green because otherwise this would start getting warm in a hurry. And by warm, I mean the maiden flesh has a little bit of pink to it. We toss in a little bit of our mint green. Just neutralizes the effect that that warmer color has. Now that's actually a helmet there, so we will stop short of hitting the rest of his head. And that's what I mean. So there's there's no real clearly defined line right there. Again, sorry that things just wander off the screen. So I had to uh, create sort of artificial artificial separation between those. And like I said, this is all about essentially the chibi version of shaded base coats. Won't see uh, much of the the traditional glazing, I guess, if you want to call it that. Okay, let's lighten this up a touch. I'm just looking at what we've got there. The, the painted ones, the reference there. We're going to Take that up a little lighter. We got our mint green there. But we don't want this to get too greenish, too cool down because that's what the armor has to be. So you've got basically a gray wolf in gray armor on a chibi. Once again, placing some interesting challenges in the path. So Let's just grab ourselves some of our mint green here. 
I could take some of the Leviathan blue and, or blue liner and do a glaze over the top of this. I think I ended up doing a little bit of each on that first one. And in some ways it's a bit like the Lannister crossbowman because we have he has some red on him and we'll have to reflect some of that onto the armor of course got to do that there a little, a little bit more of the mint mint green let's get this helmet working so that's also the thing where the tassel is that's also got to be rendered as metal where did I stop the helmet so I see I just drew that little line right there that really is not there you can see it's all just a flat surface there I just sort of artificially drew that in that's gonna be gold this will just hit that real quick it really doesn't matter because Gotta get some darks down into the recesses of his visor. A little more here. Oh, yeah, we've got this to do. And actually, this is helmet also. Well, I almost forgot. Right in here. Right in there. Give him a little bit of a helmet like I said before there wasn't any really clear delineation of well okay this is this and speaking of this this is our sort of well Tony the Tiger here for those familiar with what is that frosted flakes it really looks an awful lot like him Just, now I had used actually I was actually trying out some of the green stuff world new acrylic paints on some of these and there was a couple of grays that I wanted to play around with here I'm just making my own gray and because I wanted to save the green stuff world the new acrylic paints for something a little more specific you know, where we just, I don't I'm tempted to just say, okay, we're only going to use those new paints. Well, there's 50 colors, so, I mean, when you consider that I rarely paint with more than seven or eight. Oh, let's, let's uh, go back to our, there's a little bit transparent black, some of the gray, and some of the, well, this is dry enough to start to drop in some lighter tones. Now, even with with these, had it been up to me, there were colors I would have done differently. Well, certainly the chest on this guy would have been white. I would have tried to make it more like an actual tiger, but then there's that balance of well, you want them to look like the characters on the, the little cards because the people that would want to play this would be maybe on the younger side and they wouldn't quite understand that, well, why doesn't it look like the, doesn't look like my little card there. What, what's going on? So I, I try and follow that as close as I can. Sometimes there's practical limit to how close you can match something speaking of which we are going to ironically enough that's got to be pretty darn neutral this is what we're just okay, we're doing a little bit of our wet blending here Now let's get this back here. 
I'll bring out some of the Proacryl orange to do the body here. It's going to be mixed with some other stuff, obviously. But we've got these long, sweeping lines here. And I thought, you know what, it's better maybe to hit some of that now. So we've got some paint on all. Let's go in to our bird here. That's the transparent purple and the regular purple. This, I can see, I want a little touch of red there. Could have just grabbed some magenta, but I said the heck with it. And I just grabbed some of the... What was that? The, I think it's the fleshed here, red. So that's what we're looking for. Maybe even a touch more red here. Now, I mean, it looks all thick right here, but it's actually going to be on the almost on the translucent side. Let's give him his robe here. Like so. Some more here. Don't have to worry about the, the base. That just gets painted later. And it's just that solid color. I ended up using the Pro Acryls there also because... I knew that one coat was most likely going to cover it, and I wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So I'm going to say all that is yellow. I can double check. And just go to that initial figure there. Now, as this is being done, the Lizard Man army painting series among many other things is already underway and the the color test episode is going to be really interesting now just like this where you have each one very different from the next that's sort of how we're going to have to do the lizard bent because we want we want six sources all the same color. We don't we not want six skinks all the same color. Just like these are some pretty different colors involved. Now I'm going to throw out some clear red here somewhere on the palette like that. Because we are going to do... Ah, here he is. we got to do a red cloak on this guy so let's grab some of this red some red liner here and I want to see just how, how dark is that dark enough that I maybe will grab a touch of the transparent brown and some of the black but I probably let's say I had the red liner out here I probably mix that in with it but we see we get ourselves a nice deep rich red and I'll have to look at my reference okay that is I actually says some kind of uh, light blue trousers on all right good to know And I do believe, yeah, crosses over here. Then here, I'm just going to have to shove the brush down into here. You can't really see what the heck's going on. But I just need to get some of that red color down in there. I don't think he's, yeah, he's not wearing a scarf. It's just... A whole bunch of red robe there. This is a pretty chewed up craft brush right here. Mostly because I've I knew I was gonna have to really shove this thing down into some of these crevices here. 
no sense in beating up a brand new one. All right, I believe that's going to take care of our cloak there. We have some more red to take care of, but we'll brighten it up just a bit here. And that's tassel and pants, I guess, on this guy. Tassel here. Such a huge wide open shape and used to, oh, okay, let's take those Easterlings again. They have a bunch of those little tassels on them and there's definitely the individual hair sculpted into it and here that's just not the case. It's almost like an orangey red. That's a little bit of that Cassandora yellow. Looks like I actually forgot to do an armor piece over there. Not a big deal. And right away I'm just gonna insert some of this red in here because I remember painting some of that in. Right, let's look at... Ah, okay. It's it's dark, so I'm going to go back to my dark red here. <clears throat> Sorry, brush hit the floor. Where are we at? Right there. And I'm pretty sure there's probably... Well, there's red paint on the floor, which is no big deal because it's junk carpet that's kind of needs to be ripped up, but I'm sure there's a nice deep red spot on my flannel pants now, which is, there's some irony there given how we were talking about the various tragedies at Fort Wapple over the years that all have involved blood red paint, not purple or pink or polka dot or green or anything like that. Always, is that why does it always have to be snakes? It's why does it always have to be blood red? So while I've got it here, I'm going to grab some of this mint green. Just real quick, shoot some of that in here. We've got our transparent black. That's going to go into these. Best to just do that right away. Get these filled in. Like you do. And what else? I think he is dry enough. This is our eagle, bird, wizard, whatever he is. So we're going to take some of that sepia liner. Ever slight touch of some of our red over here. Let's do the top part of this cloak here. It's obviously a little more translucent because pretty much everything that we have used here is a clear, a transparent, something along those lines. And we'll throw a little more of the yellow in there. It does give you an indication of how much lighter we can go. This is, it is just so different painting these things. I can't quite get over, and I thought going back to the GW stuff was different. Yeah, yeah, 
well, that was certainly <laughs> when these things hit. I said, "Oh my gosh, we are not in Kansas anymore." Now let's go in here and let's real quick hit the eyes. Yeah, we will be going back over these. But for now, because they're just so so huge, need to indicate real fast that there's just these massive lighter areas like this. And as always, and I'll probably say this more than once during this, with with things like this, with these workbench things, I, I try and show as much as I can of everything. I cannot show absolutely everything. There's just some work that it's going to have to be done off screen. Whether it's just stuff that's going to be real hard for you to see. Or there's just not enough time to show it all. Because that's that's a factor too. If I was just doing a couple of these, maybe one or two, I'm pretty sure we could show you the whole thing. But painting all of these, the entire thing, well, that would be a while. That could be five-ish, um, probably more like seven and that's without doing the the bases without doing the the brush on dull coat and every all the other little things that kind of have to happen afterwards and then obviously there was the the prep time just to get them to where they're at I'm just gonna grab some type of a blue here for the trousers see if that works because that's always kind of a forgotten element and in, in people when they're thinking of doing commission things that's one of the reasons why there's not the we, we like to prep them ourselves just so we know exactly when you know mold lines are gone or if it's assembled well enough to survive shipping I mean these they're just one piece chibis so no need to worry there now what else let's get our let's just get some orange on the tiger here and I'm just going to grab some of the this is the clear orange from Reaper here like that I'm going to move my little water container out of the way here. And I'm going to utilize a little bit of my yellow. I'm going to utilize, utilize, because that, that sounds interesting. Here. In effect, darkening it down a little bit, giving it some opacity with the yellow over there. And let's get our oranges into this. This was a tricky one, I have to admit, because I didn't know normally if this is a tiger. And I've painted many tigers, both on as miniatures or as freehand or just in paintings. I'm used to the orange and the white, not orange and yellow. So that was something that get a little little wrinkle, a little twist. And then, well, this fur, I guess you want to call it that. These big old blocks. Not quite used to that. I think what was the thing that I tried? I had to paint 
Oh gosh, I don't remember the name. I don't even know if they're still around, but it was. I don't want to say it was a manga type style. Ah, I don't remember what the. Uh, nope, can't think of the name. But there were lots of open surfaces like this that had to be done, and you had to sometimes paint texture where there was no texture. I guess that's that's what I'm getting at here. And then we'll just sort of let all of these different things dry, and then we'll we'll do some glazing on some. We'll do some opaque layers on others. It just whatever whatever's called for at the time, because you know me, I don't just do the same technique or whatever on every figure a lot of times I have to change it it's just I have to say okay the, to get this miniature done or whatever or this effect at least on these type of minis maybe I have to do something different because you do glazes on these you got these wide open areas I suppose it's a little bit like what was it the people that hate the with the contrast paints on some of the Space Marine parts that are more open. Now well, that's kind of what you got going on here. And we're just starting to indicate that maybe the chest here is a different color. This is where we're doing almost a touch of wet blending in a way. Not really, eh, sort of. And I'm just gonna blast in a little just indication of red here, real quick. Oh, let's see if we can't mess around with the eyes on this. Let's just get that initial light color in there. And the teeth there too. Got a whole bunch of wet orange paint right around this. So we are just we're trying to avoid that. And looks like we did successfully there. All right. So we've got some quick little essentially base coat type things here. And our next phase, we're gonna we're gonna do some more shading on this in our reds on the fur especially on the fur of these guys and we'll be right back with that next we're back and it's time to get some more definition in some of these broader areas let's mess around with these two cloaks here to get started one's got that almost kind of a muted magenta purple look and the other one more of a straight up red. Let's see what we can do with our purple over here. And again, just some really weird flow to these patterns, these folds. It does make things kind of tricky. I have to say that because after, well, especially when you've done the, the regular miniatures for so long and anything that's got some more realism to it this can really be a mind bender to say the least now the other thing that's going to happen here too is because i've got some more of the pro acryl into this it is going to be more opaque can't quite do some of the same little shifty things that i do with say the reaper clears And this, I just didn't quite know what to do with this edge here. But it's not super critical here. It, it's, we're just trying to get some sort of shading in on this so that it's not just all flat colors. 
I'll do the front side here. Pretty much all of these had some kind of thing like that going on with the folds where I had to... Oh, I always call those executive decisions. And I say, okay, yeah, this right here, it's going to have to be this way. Just maybe not ideal, but because of the way the sculpt is and other things, we'll just make this darker. Maybe we won't go as much on the highlight here as we normally would on the so-called realistic cloaks. And I can go back into this with darks as well. It's not just making it lighter. And also getting a little bit of dark in there. So this area in particular, like this, what's going on over here? And it's just some really, really weird fold sculpting. But it's a kid's game. They're just board game figures. These, This is not meant to be Chimera or Big Child or Limbo figures or GW figures. I suppose these things, they're not classic chibi figures because their heads are larger, but it seems like they're not quite as, I don't want to use the word distorted, that has some negative connotations to it. But they definitely seem more just, oh gosh, I still can't think of the soda pop, that's the name, of the, the miniatures that I painted once or twice, and they were very stylized. The, the hair was not sculpted in the classic sense of hair. It was more like this, where it was just these larger blocks. Yeah, so I have no idea why all of a sudden I remembered that. I think what was happening is, is all these other companies kept coming to mind whose names didn't sound at all similar to that. I have no idea why. It's just... The brain really hasn't worked too much all week long. Probably, well, I'm sure it's some residuals from the convention extravaganza that was going on. And, well, the craziness of September. Here, let's just do a quick little comparison of what we got now and see just how much lighter because... I may need to start going in the opposite direction. Where is our other areas? So actually what we're going to do is go even more towards the red here. So let's get some magenta out here. Some magenta. Add that with, this is that lighter purple from the monument line and now with a little bit of the magenta in there maybe that also can I don't want to say make this more transparent but cut down on the extreme opacity of things now the the yellow I think for sure Looking at the other guy, I'm going to go back in probably with a sepia liner and some other yellow mix to get that looking darker in the shadows. But there's a lot of color temperature things at play here, especially on this guy. Because it, it's the case for reds too, but especially with things that fall under the umbrella of purple lots of color temperature it can be very warm or very cool and it it sounds really strange but think of how much more red is in this obviously that's what tilts it more towards magenta rather than purple and sometimes my favorite purples if you want to call them that actually have a whole bunch of blue in there there was a really old reaper color oh i think it was called 
amethyst blue. Yeah, or just it was just called amethyst, and it was it was a dark blue. But it was, it looked like blue, but it actually had a whole bunch of purple in it, infused in it. You didn't really see that until you started to lighten it. When you started to lighten it, that's when all of a sudden you saw, you would see, holy smokes, it's got all of this purple in there. That was, that was pretty nifty. So what I'm doing here is actually... Infusing a little bit of the magenta slash red. Some of the shadow areas. Just real quick. And as I... And I'll hold up the other one next to it. And we'll see. We'll see how that played out. Let's just hit this right here. Huh. That was... Hoping this might happen. See what, what happened there? That's actually kind of a craft painting trick where you sort of load up the brush in a certain pattern and then as you put the brush stroke on there it actually leaves this little transition like that. It's I don't know if how many I think I did it maybe twice and we're talking thirty some odd years ago when I was playing around with that. I just happened to see that little technique and gave it a shot. So now we've got, I would say, a little bit more of a reddish feel in our mid-tones and shadows. So that's a little a little bit of a change there. Yeah, that's starting to that's starting to do it. So let's go a tad bit on the lighter side. Again, I'm going to emphasize the I'll throw some magenta in there. which means a little more transparency you can see it especially as I work in here and sometimes okay let's say for whatever reason just not able to quite match the color of the first one and I just did this on something I don't know what it was Oh, I know what it was. It was some pyromancers that I did. And because I had painted the initial couple of months before, and I mean months before, instead of trying to continuously screw around with, I think it was nine additional ones to try and match the first two, I said, the heck with this. And I changed the first two. That was a whole bunch easier. Changing two rather than continuously trying to mess around and modify nine made a whole bunch more sense. Now, we compare. Yeah, so what I'm going to do actually is so some of that purple is going to go into some of these shadow areas here. This is the purple that I had. Let's give it a little more purple. A whole lot easier just to change this guy than it is to mess around with the other. So the value is about the same. About the same, but there. <laughs> okay. I will not confirm nor deny that that is cheating in some way of shape or form but that definitely got things in line so lighter here don't want to forget my magenta into this there the feathers I didn't do a whole bunch on on those guys kept that pretty simple I could have gone in and painted obviously the individual little lines that you see all the time in feathers but that leads to well okay if there's a couple of lines in these feathers then why is there not lines all over his head showing individual little feathers there and that was a 
a little slippery slope. Let's say, for whatever reason, these were for a chibi contest. Well, maybe then you spend the several extra hours that it's going to take to enable that feather effect. But here, that is not the task at hand. The, the people that will be using these, let's just say, will not quite have the appreciation for such things. And we work accordingly with that. It's actually what I might just do here, just while we're working on this guy, now I talked about doing the robes on the other guy with the red, but I think we're just going to stick here with this one. The other thing is, too, there is a limited amount of time. I don't want this to be a four-hour tutorial, as always, so some figures I might just... There's some stuff that will have to happen off camera, but for here, it, it's really... There's just some concepts that I'm trying to get across here just some concepts this is that same old maiden flash you can see even though these are pretty brightly colored we are not doing a lot of different things as far as putting colors out on the palette we're, we're keeping this pretty simple we're just doing a lot of mixing doing more mixing than grabbing more colors I could do that Uh, there's a couple of reasons why. I, there's sort of the obvious ones where I just like to mix paints and that sort of thing. But I end up working in so many different locations. And not just out of the house. We're talking in the house. Because there are times where I'm at like workstation Z instead of workstation A, B, or C. And I have kind of things scattered all over the house basically I know that sounds crazy so wait a minute <laughs> why would you not be working at your so-called normal station well there are times where I either need a bigger area to work in or to if it's gonna be super late at night and things have to be a little more quiet I'm working in a different location an undisclosed location All right, that is that's just going to have to be going up. I could also play with where's my not ah uh, yeah 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 yeah. Let's see what this might do here. Let's just see. Now this is not a contrast paint. I, this might be some of the stuff that's actually going away here. The shades I think are what's going away just for the heck of it we are going to add this into some of those shadow areas and sure enough yeah look at that uh-huh now if those of you that are familiar with some of the older painting pyramid videos and we're talking from 2013 2014-ish you will see me using some of those shades, uh, the Dorici Violet and stuff. Now, I've kind of avoided putting those into videos once I heard that those were going to go away. But people have those. I'm going to grab me some more. Oh, I'm just looking for some of my sepia liner here. There it is. In there, I'm going to grab some transparent brown, put some of that back out there. So I've just avoided using that because, well, what if people can't get it? Eh, at this stage, I, I might play around with some of those because I have them here, and a lot of you probably have them too. And you know, what are you going to do? Just throw them away because GW doesn't make them anymore? It's just, again, to do that whole thing with options where, okay, you got the old shades 
and that's where we might do especially more of a I guess we'll call it old timey shaded base coat where what I used to do was just sort of get lighter colors and mid-tones everywhere and then just do a bunch of glazes with the shades and the secret weapon glazes and such this is a different approach from what I used to do but everybody's well hopefully everybody's approach evolves anyways you know, we're just getting ourselves a little bit a little bit light here on this fur let's fur feathers I was looking at the Oh gosh, I still haven't figured out if that's a raccoon or a squirrel or whatever. But yeah, the old classic shaded beast coat thing, it almost looked like I was doing a dry brush. It really almost did. It wasn't. It was a, the damp brush. That's where that sort of terminology came from. Just gonna work in some of these few little lighter things here because I'm gonna check our first one that we did, and that seems to actually have some there's some reds, there's some reddishness that gets into that. So while we have plenty of reds out on the palette that we can mix into these browns for sure. Let's do that before we get too far with what we have going here. Let's just grab a red and that went over here on these feathers. Now, of course, I will emphasize this again. The, the kids playing with these, they will hardly be aware of any kind of slight temperature shift in the the browns on this whatever the bird is here that's just they will not notice but you want to see how close you can match it and that's why some of these for a variety of reasons were I just kinda did one of each instead of both at the same time those other ones that you saw well that tiny little picture up in the corner there that I showed you earlier well those I did pretty much all of those simultaneously but I don't really think you guys would want to be seeing me paint the same figure twice so that's why those were done separately and we're just kinda of doing these individual guys here I thought about doing a couple of videos of these but these seem to work better for the videos. I was painting those other ones. I thought, yeah, there's too much stuff here that'll either be hard to reach as I film. There's just a few reasons why I said, nah, we'll we'll stick with these guys here for filming. Okay, so he's starting to get a little, a little bit lighter there. Let's go one step more and. Where are we at here? So you can see more definition on him. We have a little blue gem thing too that also has to go in there. We'll we'll play with that pretty soon as well. These I don't want to get too light with this until I see things like the the beak and especially this scarf whatever it is that he's wearing here now you can see there is a bit of texture that's being brushed in here it's a suggestion I think to really go in and paint in every possible little feather thing given the fact that there's just these little bulbous things right here See that the, the hint of feather, just a suggestion that they're there. 
is more than good enough. Ooh, let's grab a touch of the yellow here. I'll throw that on his staff. A few quick lights, and the reason I'm doing this is because we will now transition over to this, which means... Yeah, there's a little bit of orange in there. We've got our sepia liner going. If I've said sepia tone, I apologize. I have no idea how all of a sudden that has crept in. Maybe I was doing Photoshop things and I thought about doing sepia tone effects. I don't know. But now here is our yellow, which believe it or not, has to be built up from something that's almost more of a reddish yellow orange to something that's more of a cooler lemon yellow. And we'll we'll break out the clear yellow again for that. So again, you can see our we work fast. We work quick. Keep the line going. What's his? Ah, that's uh, I, I did the button in a blue color there, so we'll do that on this too. All right, almost time to break out the clear yellow. I also want to see what color I did for the irises on this and I think it's orange so see there's orange there with a bit of transition so I'm going to start out right there with the yellow and then we'll go in with the darker shading clear Yellow, back out on the palette. Just going to find me a spot for it, and now right along here. And this is where I am going to utilize the somewhat... Tr see that right there? That doesn't happen with the Pro Acryls. That little line that I did right there... That, and this one here, see, by lessening the pressure on the the brush, we're going to do that here. See, look at that. There's less pressure. It's almost like I'm wet blending, but there is no wet blending going on. There's no dry brushing going on. I'm just going to sneak in a little bit of the Maiden flash there. I think I am going to get some of the some of the maggot white back out there because the the maggot white mixed with the yellow can also help create that sort of lemon yellow. Here, let's get the top edge of that. Top edge of that. Where is my maggot white? There's some throw that over here and now we've got ourselves our brightest highlights on the yellow scarf let's get this shoulder here I tried to get rid of mold lines where I could. There, there were some that I just, I don't know. It's, it's softer plastic, and I was using my usual sanding sticks to get rid of those. But it, it does rough up the surface a bit, and that makes it a little bit difficult then to paint these broader areas. Because it just it shows up the roughness of the texture. Now the beak gets 
some dark there. Eyes like so. This is that transparent black. So he starts to look very different. We're gonna, it's not an outline here, it is just doing a little bit of shading on the eyes, the eyelid. I'm just gonna get a little bit of a there, stronger line on that. In the fingers here, or feathers, as the case may be. Now, real quick, I'll just throw out some clear blue over here. This is the mint green that I'm going to throw out here first, and we'll let this dry. And then we'll play with some of the clear blue over that later. Good enough. There. Set you aside. And now, let's mess with this guy a bit here and I'm gonna get some of this Leviathan blue out here I'll grab some of that contrast medium and what we will do a little bit of shading in here and even wipe some of it away. Just gonna use my finger, not even gonna use the not even gonna use the little makeup sponges or anything. Now of course reflection wise, you know, we should reflect the tail here. Well we can only do so much on something like this. So this is where we have to decide, okay, what can we genuinely do as far as reflections and other more realistic type things. I think we'll just can use the use the old finger right there and get that somewhat darker oh, shading in there. See it happens pretty fast. It happens pretty quick. Now we need some here too. At least according to the one that I did before. And now let's let's go back the other way. Let's go back the other way and start to work in some lighter colors. Let's see what we're going to do around this ear. So this is another thing. I mean, most helmets do not have ears protruding through them. So that calls for some inventive thinking. Let's see, I think, ah, those are gold. So we will let those be. Those trim pieces there, I just noticed that. What do we do here on the... Oh, what the heck, I'm going to make this helmet a little different than the other one. But trying to see if I can't reflect that red of the tassel onto this, because ah, that would be fun. So I see there's a bunch of gold in some of these areas that I just didn't really see as gold before. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to turn this back around here and see what we did on this. Get this shoulder with a little more of the 
lighter sky color. Now we're not doing this in a pure, what would you call it, the, the sky earth type thing. It, it's sort of semi-sky earth. It's S-S-E-N-M-M. -E -M. There we go. We'll, we'll use that. How's that sound? But I've got, see, i got that Leviathan blue mix over there, so... That's it's semi-transparent because of what's in there. Can use that to do a little bit of. See, that's almost like a, almost like we're using oils there. Almost like we're using oils. And here, I'm gonna use a touch of that Leviathan blue, some of the black, and this is where we get a touch of a horizon line there. And we also did that here. I'm just looking at the other one. There. What did we do over here? I'm just going to give that a little bit of a line there. Okay. And actually, yeah, I'll go in. It, it seems like the, the fur gets pretty light as we get down towards the tail and the hands and such. We'll just do that straight away here while we're thinking about it. Because as I start to think about, okay, highlights on the armor, if the fur is going to be white, that will certainly impact whatever it is that we were thinking about doing. on our gold and our metal highlights. This guy here, I do remember taking some, some more liberties with the face because I just had no idea what the heck he was supposed to be based on the little, that little picture on those little circles there, the, the game piece, whatever that would be called. I'm sure there's an actual term for it, but it, it escapes me right now. See what I'm doing here? Again, it looks like it's a dry brush. It is not. And when I did the other one, that was the best way to manage the, to get some transitions. Aha! Here he is. So, yeah, here I just, I hit to play some, play with this a little bit. Speaking of which, we will continue here. Mm, yeah, let's get. Uh, you'll notice that I put the little on his muzzle here, the little whisker. What would you call it? Whisker pores. <laughs> Those really weren't on the original little. I don't know. We'll refer to it as concept art, even though it's not what it is. But it just seemed to be the right thing to do there with that particular stuff. Now let's get going to go in with the gray here, some of the white, and let's get some lighter colors on these ears. So again, you can see how it's being pushed around the paint. Look at that. See the stroke being made a little wider there. Again, I can always go back and use my finger. Like that. Let's get these a little lighter here. There. Now, what would I do around... Okay, the eyes fairly dark. And it looked like there was some... I did some brown here inside the ears. And now i got to start dealing with the areas that are gold-ish. 
And I do, nope, those were not gold, so we're going to change that back. Now that these things on the on the cuffs, I guess we'll call them that, that those were gold too, but they were not. But I do know that this stuff is here. We got this. Again, around the collar here, and this piece. That, is that everything that, uh, nope, nope, we got some down here too. Now, when I did this gold, and especially those that just saw that recent tutorial thing on the Easterlings and the gold there and well even the the cipher lords you can see we're not going in when we do the golds on these guys not going in necessarily with the the greens and the purples and everything else it's a little more we're simplifying the process a bit he also has some golden yellow in the eye so let's just while we have it let's throw it in there I mean you can only do so much realism on these it's hard enough to do realism on well just just something like the cipher lords where he's look at those and go um yeah that's that's definitely fantasy and then you got these that's a whole new brew right there Hopefully this does, I don't know, maybe people aren't going to actually do the paint chibis or whatever, but this opens up some other possibilities for more stylized figures because there's definitely more stuff like this out than there was, geez, even just a few years ago it seems. I remember when the soda pop stuff came out and that was really, really different. And you know, now chibis, heck, it, there's even now a debate about what's a chibi because there's so many different things that kind of fall under that umbrella. And there was a time where there was none of that stuff. And I can see that very quickly, very quickly working in Some of these lighter things are a little more yellow. Certainly more just of the yellow than we do a normal gold, I guess we'll call it that. Oh, let's just drop in a few lighter things here. And we need to pick a few spots around here. Do the same thing. Almost forgot this hinge. And then, very quickly here, let's see what sort of lights we can find here on things like the the shoulder pads and the elbows here on the arms still thinking about that cylindrical sort of highlight pattern that you've heard me talk about so many times so here just a little touch of sky earth there not not a whole bunch but just a little bit let's see what we've got going on with the helmet here yeah let's I'm gonna turn this guy around see what we've got going on with the and there let's Flatten out this brush and sort of feather that a bit. Maybe 
make this even a touch lighter. So I'll mix in some mint green in with that. As you do. Work in that same sort of linear, even here on the well, the armor on his legs here. <clears throat> We've got to do this on his back. I think that's just about gonna wrap it up for this segment here. Yeah, we'll wrap it up here with this. What we'll do is we'll get to the, let's see, we got our, our Tony the Tiger here. We'll get to this guy next. We'll play with him. And what I may do off camera is just some of this sort of stuff here, where I bring in a few highlights and do a couple of detail things like that. Here, let's get a little, maybe some reflected light here. And uh, I'm just going to lighten up things like this, like the tail here that we couldn't do before. But just look at the directional strokes here. Directional strokes more important when you're painting something that's virtually 2D. So we're going to use the, my finger there. Sorry, the camera shakes. Yeah, not a dry brush because there's plenty of paint in there. And I just put a little bit of moisture in the paint there. But you can see what the effect of, is of that. Maybe a little lighter here and I noticed on the other one that there was also that suggestion of fur in places like here and you can see there's a, there's a quick brush strokes here sort of to keep the flow going as much as anything else Ooh, actually before before we head out here I'm gonna spin this around this part here. This is another place where I kind of did a little bit of liberties there because I always like to have the the wolves. If he is a wolf, and I think he is, I do this little bit of orange there on the on the muzzle there. That's just it's something that I added myself because every so often you just have to have a little bit of your. I just kind of snuck that in there. And I believe that pretty much does the job there. So I think now we will be ready to move on along to our our tiger there, making him nice and red. Here, just before I forget, let's get some of that in there too. Not sure why they're all looking off to the side like this, but that's what they're doing. All right, so we will be right back with this guy right here. Let's sit to work on this tiger right here. And he's kind of... A little while because there's this you got the grays but then you also have the the orange here let's tackle the orange real quick here it's gonna be a combination of the here we'll get some of the clear orange back out here and I think yeah what the heck we will a little bit of the pro Wicro orange too just we'll throw it out there and then I'll get some of the Procrill yellow. So here, let's throw that over here. Get your back. 
And here's some of the pro acryl yellow. What is this? Golden yellow? Yeah. Throw you right over there. Just need that opacity. So let's move the palette up here. Gonna grab some of that clear red. Get that reasonably. Yeah. And you can see it's sort of on the transparent side still. That's because we didn't really use much of the or any of the, the pro acryl orange in there. When it comes time to make it to lighten up that shading, we can start to enter some of that into the mix. And just by default of being that more opaque color, well, guess what? That is going to make it lighter. I'll just work in the arms here. Now I might have to break away at times here from the orange. I'm just going to throw a little bit of that pro acryl in there. And I think that's actually his arm. That is not armor. So yeah, we'll throw some of that in there. And it's bound to hit some of our gray too. And then for whatever reason they chose to make the chest yellow instead of white. I do not know why, but that's just how it went. Let's start to work in some of our lighter orange and you can see what a uh, big difference just a little bit of the pro acryl orange made in there it's just it's pretty wild how just one color can be formulated a little different now of course that has some white in it unlike the clears the clears do not have white in them they are just straight up pigment and that's why we can use them in that kind of watercolor type of a method because, well, that's, when you think of watercolors, I mean, yeah, you can do with the gouache and all the other stuff like that that has the white kind of infused in it, but really the watercolors are just kind of straight up pigment and glycerin, I believe, mixed together. Now, I'm sure there's a bunch of different types and people will say, no, it's this and that, or whatever, but that's uh, just it. I'm trying to come up with simple ways of thinking about those clear paints versus these other ones. I don't want to say that the pro acryls are more like oils, but some of you can recall those couple of 2D art things that I did, and guess what I used? I used pro acryl for them, and it was a lot like having almost like an oil paint. It was a fantastic 2D art medium. I really liked it. I thought it was great. I think you'll be seeing the, the, well, at least a little bit of the 2D art again in the form of some painted backdrops for a few miniatures. Actually, I'm, I'm thinking a couple of things. So there's actually a, been a kind donation of a Sauron figure for Lord of the Rings and I wanted to do a sort of a painted backdrop of Mordor and kind of having the, the Tower of Barad-dûr and Mount Doom that sort of a backdrop setting for him because I've done I already did that one version of him with the the, the lava reflections which makes sense right but it would be nifty. I haven't really ever done something with a painted backdrop. I've done vignettes that had, as we lighten up the orange here, just, I mean, it's kind of basic and we're adding a little more of the pro acryl along the way. But that, that should be pretty fun to see how that plays out with some kind of forced perspective painted backdrop that'll Obviously entails some basing. It will just look at this right here on his arm. And because there's still some of that clear orange in there, so I can feather that out. It's not completely 100% even here. See how we just feather that? 
that was all straight up pro acrylic, it would be harder to do this. See how that gets a little bit lighter and more faded. The pro acrylic covers so much, it just it's not going to let you do that. Uh, you can, you, know, you can water it down. You can add mediums. Heck, you could probably. I think we did a test with the contrast medium and the pro acrylics. If not, we can do that in some other video too. But the reason, see how I've got the brush spread out? Look at that. It's almost like a tiny filbert brush. Well, you need that because this is such a wide surface area here. And we're trying to get that covered as fast as possible. Now let's let's get him some yellow on that chest. Somehow trying to think of directional strokes here too. See how that sort of fades out a bit. It's even doing a little bit of wet blending with the orange, partially because we still have some orange in, in the brush. We never did watch that out. Let's go back to... I'm going to have to make sure I keep enough of that clear orange in there because I want to get this to get too too bright. And I'm going to look at his... I think his eyes are actually like a blue color. So what we'll do is we'll hit his eyes and the blue gemstone on the eagle's staff. I know this was supposed to be all about the tiger and the, well, I'm just going to call him the squirrel. Not moose and squirrel. Get this a little lighter here. And I, I just can't emphasize enough that this is not a dry brush. This really is just that feathered brush stroke. I've mentioned it many times. I will just continue to mention it because if I continue to mention it, it will just get stuck in your head. You will have no choice. It will just be there. Let's get a little bit of a thumb on him. Here I can go back in with some darker colors on his hand as well. I'm going to do another shot of the yellow here on the chest. I do think it's pretty hilarious that, that as I was talking to the folks at, at Monument Creature Caster as they were making these paints, that they they wished that the yellow had more coverage to it. And it's pretty funny because it's got some it's got some coverage, that's for sure. No doubt about that. Let's throw in a little quick clear red here stars now here yeah, let's let's do a uh, some stuff on the eyes real quick real quick here to lighten this up before we get into the other aspects of it so there We've, you know, let's bring these out a little more. There's one more there. What did I do with the tail? Did I make that black? Yeah, I ended up just making that black. It, obviously, instinct says make that white. But I will go with what... I'm just going to go with what the drawings told me there. Okay. Good enough little quick line of separation here before we get back in with some regular shading and some highlights like you do now I'm looking at this okay so let's do some reinforcing of the Dark's on the face, nose, and here. I 
because I can always go back over it. Here, let's hit the areas in between the fingers too while I think about it. Right, this is what made me just say think chibi because we well, got these little tiny hands and such and the heads are pretty big in relation so let's here I'll get this darker too it's not black it's got some of the transparent brown in there because otherwise that would just uh, a straight up outline eh that's not going to do it that is not going to be terribly interesting, even on something like this. So blue, we've got our clear blue out here still. I'll mix a little mint green into that. Time for this part of the eyes. And then we'll shift over to our eagle wizard, whatever he is. Where are you at? Here you are. Now we will just do a little bit of a semi-glazing thing here. Just how down. Okay, that's relatively... Even the shadow area of... Or the, the part of that gem that's normally pretty light, that's kind of on the darker side. But we'll do another hit on that after do we give that a little time to dry now how dark did we go or how light did we go either way on this part of the eye we're just gonna make that a little lighter i'm just taking the blue here finding a relatively clean Spot on the palette for it. A little touch of that mint green in there. And we'll start to work in a little bit of that typical gemstone thing where it's light on the underside, darker on the top. And I'm also going to mix something that's kind of like a light bluish gray here for the trousers because that's what we need to do on this guy and no trousers on the other side let's see if we can lighten that up a touch it's kind of a grayish blue again doing the the brush strokes that try to follow contours. What color are his eyes? Uh, basically a gray, and he seems to be cross-eyed for some unknown reason. Let's do that. This is how you keep that line moving. Instead of, we have all these things to paint, why would we just sort of tackle them one at a time when we have the colors on the brush or we're thinking about it just get in there and work with work with that color if that's the the phase that you're in even here you know this is supposed to be gray well what the heck let's throw a little gray in there while I'm thinking about it let's hit his nose a few other little lines here just to get some definition and now perhaps even quick little glaze here on this pouch again while we're thinking about it gives it a chance to dry now we go back to Mr. Tiger Start to lighten up the blue in his eye. We go back to the eagle here. 
to add some more lights out to his staff because that is now I had a chance to dry. Now I'm going to work the other way here. I'm going to take some of that clear blue. Heck, I'm going to touch transparent purple in there because we're going to do something like this. And we'll just sort of feather that again. It's not a glaze. This is not watery whatsoever. This is just, this is the clear paints on parade right here. You can see that they just have that nifty little bit of translucency to them. Why not utilize it? And here even just a little bit of wet blending. Let's see if we can't go tiny bit lighter down there and then as we let that dry then we can go back in and do some lighter things but for now let's put the darker areas of our which I'm going to get some of that transparent black now what's interesting is the as I look at the eyes on him I still got highlights to do on the original one which we're going to do and just a second here. So get that black in. Along those lines. And you can see we've got to do some stuff on his eyes. And while the other one dries, we're going to do this. There's some of that gray. Just going to get a little touch of light here in the eyes. They're so big, you kind of need more than just that flat black there. Man, blue, we are going to grab some darker blue for there. So I've got some more shading going on there. We're going to do the same on this guy. I'm going to just, I have some darker gray in there, but, or lighter gray, sorry. But we're going to enhance that a touch. Just trying to get these two sort of in line with each other. Now we've got the light on both of these. Speaking of which, let's grab some of our lighter color here and we're just going to put it right at where those two areas meet the blue and the black and then one more area like that maybe even a so see that looks more instead of just one dot you know it, it really does Add so much more if you've got some multiple hair. See one more on and the nose here. Let's get a little highlight on that. And then right here again, where those two meet, maybe a continuation there and another secondary dot. Gives it so much more personality to it than just the single little one dot. Now, let's see what we can do on our grays here. I'm going to try and get some lights on this. And like I said, I won't subject you to every last little bit of these things but once again using see, big broad strokes here like so and 
And the armor gets some. Yeah, there's some lighter areas here and this part of whatever these are. I said it, if it were, you know, if you're doing this for yourself, you could do some additional whatever on the shoulder pads, some more markings there. So we're just trying to stick with the as close to that original as we can. Again, try not to get too bright with that. Now that we've got the orange in place, we've got these crazy little markings to do. See those? And I think now that we've got our black out here, we can execute those really simply. First, though, I see we've got to restore a bit of a, a line here. And how did I do that on the face there? So it almost looks like he's got a the cartoon smile thing going on here. So we'll just do two of those. And we've got two to do on the other side. There. And there. We've got three lines to do here. Just trying to again follow the as best as I can the contour of the arm. One more, and I see a line that we've got to reinforce here. Now, did I have any on the back of him? Oh, I had some on the tail. What did I do? Four of them, five of them. Obviously, we could do some on his back or whatever, but uh, you could only do so much with something that's this heavily stylized. So we will move on to Mr. We'll just call him Squirrel. No idea if he's actually a squirrel or not. We're just going to call him one. We're just going to label him a squirrel. He may be something else. This is straight up sepia liner here. I also have to darken the inside of his ear, I believe. And we will do that now. Got some of the transparent brown, some of the black. Nothing super fancy. Does the trick. Gonna darken down his shoes. Now the bases here, they obviously have a separate color. That's what matches those little circles, game pieces, or whatever. I'm not even going to bother showing you the process of painting those. That just makes no sense. I think your time can be better spent seeing other parts of the process. Now let's lighten this up. His face is pretty light. It also has some yellow in it. And these are some of those original lighter colors that we had bird and some other things. Now, how we don't want to get too light around the face there, but see we're see how these strokes just kind of work in a like almost like spokes in a wheel. They start here and they kind of radiate out from that almost yeah, like a propeller or something like that. It is when you look at fur on actual regular animals, that's sort of how it works. 
sort of starts at the eyes and works its way out. I might actually, for the heck of it, I might actually throw some links at the end of this to those two videos and where I paint the 2D stuff. Yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea because when you get to the end of this video as the closing credits run, if I remember to do that, then you should be able to get a quick link to those. Otherwise, just go watch them if you have the links already. See how we did a little tiny bit of watering down and we're sort of blending this in. They looked so massively rough a second ago and all of a sudden now it really doesn't anymore. Let's see if we cannot get just a bit more light around the face, especially around the muzzle. Yeah, we got his mouth to do here. The couldn't quite tell what was going on with his paws slash hands on that one thing that's kind of up over the pouch sling there. Just had to kind of fudge it a little bit. What I'll, I'll probably do is some very short little final details thing at the end of this. Maybe where we just do some of the little highlight type things on the the gem, on the eagle, yeah, and some of the eyes. Now how much... Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot on the fur back here. It was a little bit, but you can see it. Even this radiates out from that one sort of central point. Can use the finger to blend that. Actually, the only other time I painted anything like this was way back in the days. This was the original painting pyramid Kickstarter. That was the painting a rivet warrior. That's right. Oh, that was that was a long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Far, far removed from what we're doing now. And I'll try it. I'm going to spin him back around again so I can see him. Can't really see the picture too well on the screen. It's blocked by a bunch of lights. Yeah, it's a little crazy with his that whole cross-eyed thing going on. Now his... Let's just do his rope really as quick as we can here. So here is some of our clear red. We're going <clears> to <throat> we're going to try and take as much advantage as we can of the translucent nature of this clear red. And I think you can see it at work there. For most folks, this would just annoy the heck out of them. For me, I was actually relying on that. Look at this. Look at that. It's almost like it's a glaze, right? But not a glaze. Look at this. Look at how transparent that is. This is how... I know people always are... Like, how the heck do you do these in, in this truncated period of time? Well, that's one way to do it. That is one way to get that done. Now the thing you got to be careful though, especially with the clears when you're using them in this way, is that they can, if they're not dry and you go back in there, you can sort of tear a hole in the paint for lack of a better term. That's why I moved around here so that maybe I can give that other stuff just enough time to dry. Like right there. 
And I didn't get too... I'm looking at the, the original there. I didn't get too light with the highlights on this. So I was all set to start mixing some yellow in with this. So I'm not sure I'm going to do a whole bunch of that. And there's, again, using it in that semi-translucent way. You know, the speed is nice. That That's fantastic. But it's actually, when, it, when you see it, it almost looks airbrushed because you are able to see through it. But it doesn't have some of the potential watermarks of a glaze. Wish I actually had some of the pyromancers here to show you. Well, actually, I do have a video on the pyromancers. I think that was that's a public one, so anybody can see that. But there was lots of deep reds in the cloak, and we really utilized the clear red for sure on that. So there we have. I think I will go just ever so slightly lighter with a few highlights on the red here. And that, I just mixed in a touch of that orange from Pro Acryl. It will make it ever so slightly more opaque. Not just lighter, but also a little more opaque. So this is how you can do, I think, where you're relying on the darker color underneath to show through, but not because it's a glaze. And there you have that. So what do we need to do? Well, there's the hat here. What the heck? We'll just real quick work with that. We've got some gray here. Large broad surface requires large broad brush strokes. Look at how we've smashed this brush wide open like that. And now we can get a little bit of a lighter gray in there. You can see it's not super wet. That's why the whole palette's getting moved. We have just take a little bit of water in there to get that to flow. And once again, I'm going to utilize my finger to do that. Because with something like this, this huge area, you could drive yourself nuts. Because, I mean, it is just a, it's kind of just a dome. And it would drive you insane Okay, so we've got this here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just take my finger, tap it on there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Sort of layers of application and tapping the finger. It's sort of like a pastel painting. A whole lot like a pastel painting, in fact. Okay, again, take my finger and just, this is so much like what I did with that Rivet Wars figure, it's hilarious. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll come back again for just some final little things, doing the eyes on some of these here, you know, our, our gemstone on the eagle and such. So we'll be right back. We're getting into the final stages here. Going to do a few last things. Let's mess around with the with the eyes, making them look a little bit more, oh, like gemstones, I suppose. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some some blue, some gray, mix that together. 
we're going to go into... Remember, we're going to have our brighter highlight up here, which means we need to sort of do the opposite thing, just like you would in some kind of a gemstone. We'll do that here in our crazy little cross-eyed squirrel. That sounds like a weird song right there. Really does. Now here, that bluish gray, that sort of makes a nifty little contrast with your the brown of the eagle. Is that all four-ish? Here, let's maybe do a bit more of that on Mr. Tiger over here. Yeah. We will also, while we're thinking about it, let's see if we can't go a touch lighter on these couple of surfaces right here. That's all. Just using these long, this is why we're using that liner brush. Remember we've talked about that in the past, liner versus spotter. It is the ideal thing for, well, lines, yeah, whatever, but these long, smooth brush strokes like this. It just These don't really happen with the spotters, I can tell you that. I think we've got that pretty well settled. Let's see if we can't do some brighter little areas in our eyes for highlights here. We also have to do a little highlight here on the beak, and it's pretty much the same principle as with the eyes. If we cross those two areas here, I'm going to do that here. Again, in between those two areas, Kind of that dominant one, and then a little less. Same thing right here. Just gonna make sure you can see that. And then a lesser, a couple lesser dots around there. Even maybe bring out. That gives it a little more dimension there. Now we've got our. staff here. So we're going to do this in sort of a curved format like that. Let us do the same thing on the other side over here. See a longer shape. It tapers down. Beautiful little doodads like that. Now let's see if we can't I think there is some, eh, the heck with it. We will just go with some of the purple here. Going to make this a little darker around it. Now, if it's a little on the shiny side here. I'm going to be doing, well, a ton of dull coat over these things. Oh, my gosh. Just to really try and make these as armored as possible. Because they're, they're probably going to see some abuse. I mean, heck, just banging around in the box by themselves. They're not going to have, well, they, they may, but I'm just assuming there won't be tons of regular padding for them. So let's do our wolf over here. Once again, right at where those two areas are and then another smaller one here and then another smaller area within the eye itself I'm gonna throw in a few more those directional strokes like I talked about this is the maggot white now if you really wanted some super super bright white highlights. Well, maybe that's where you use the Pro Acryl. And I'm just trying to find a few areas of highlights on the metal. What do we got here? 
what have we here? We will make this a little lighter too. Because I noticed this on the other one. There. Now we'll try and this now this is where a spotter okay. We need to go even a little bit finer on some things here. Well let's let's grab the little spotter thing here and do that. Cause maybe that is a little bit easier with that spotter brush. Just taking the transparent black reinforcing a few lines. Like you do. And if we wanted to do similar thing what we did on the eagle. Play around around the eyes here so it's not just dark around them. Maybe even here, let's do a little work around that. Now, I can't do any, re well, the sort of reflected light we would normally do on, say, the un part of the armor that faces towards the ground, because in this case, the ground is going to be a, well, it's a black base. Now, that's, it's what the character has. So, once again, another case where we have to sort of modify what we would normally do on something like this. Have to just be willing to, to do that. What else on here? Let's go on to our squirrel here. This one's a little on the tricky side. It's a little different. We're going to put a large dot here and here. And then we got a smaller one that goes here. That's what I'm seeing on the other one, so we're going to stick with that. And then I'm just going to get out some some of that maiden flesh real quick for some of the clothes. And as I said, these things, I'm going to do some more painting on these guys. Fix up some edges and such, and I'll paint those bases. Believe it or not, painting those bases took a while because they've got to be one flat solid color and even with the pro acrylics it took a couple of layers in some cases which that was a surprise I was not expecting to have to do that a couple of times so we'll get a few little lights here and this is the first time I've really messed around with one of my spotter brushes because now the situation starts to call for it. I'm going to take some of that Pro Acryl Yellow there. I'm going to see if I can't get it. Just a couple. One or two. Yep. Just needed something especially on this this part where the face is. It, such a tough call once again because it is not a traditional figure in any way shape or form now if I was doing lots and lots of chibis I would probably have some kind of more standard approach to that it's like anything else it's just like with the all the historical figures That's, that does it for the red there. Let's see if we do anything with uh, the red here on this guy. It's fairly bright there. We're just going to, once again, suggest a few markings on that tassel. 
which I think you can see just using these directional strokes essentially creating texture that is not there in any shape or form and I might just sneak a few little extra things here into these de facto golds here maybe again not a black line because we're using the brown the transparent brown here all I want to do is make sure there's some kind of actual sheeting there here on the little hinges which are not so little I might even darken that a bit maybe even interiors of the ears that seems to actually kind of like that might retrofit that onto the other one who knows so there we go I think that gives you a decent idea of just how to approach these type of things like I said it does take a little different outlook you know, the directional strokes become very important we also played around a little bit with the opacity of paints between the transparents the clears the pro acryls see like right there that was the pro acryl now that we create a little bit more shadow than maybe or what would you call it lights and darks than there is possibly on the other surfaces that's not a horrible thing it, it in some ways it, it creates a uh, interest a center of interest there I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do a little bit of I'm gonna go back to the other one this is where we're just gonna go in here and I'm gonna give him a little lighter yeah what the heck why not okay so thanks again for for watching these and supporting the the patreon it means a lot because something like this just wouldn't be on camera otherwise it who knows hey maybe I wouldn't have even thought about doing something like this and taking on a project like this because well it's not really what I do and and when you do things that you've never tried before it generally takes longer so I'll catch you again on the next next episode it for some of you it'll be an army painting episode that'll be getting caught up again on the Necrons even more we'll be seeing actually a black heart models bust another one of the game of thrones busts because i've been itching to paint one of those i just couldn't do it while we were gone and i've been saving that so those of you part of the dark sword slash black heart pledge you can be looking forward to that i think we got lots of fun stuff planned there will be more army painting series and we're also going to start with the basically the more contest oriented stuff not just golden demons but also things for reaper con as we just add a few more a few more darks here so thanks again everybody here let's let's get maybe the the bird over here and have these two guys checking you out wishing you well for those of you in the U.S., Happy Thanksgiving. I'm sure you'll be getting some videos before then, but there we go. So once again, much appreciated. You want to drop a like on this video or something like that, that's always cool. YouTube likes it. makes me happy when YouTube is happy. So I'll catch you on the next one.